Good morning, everybody. I'd like to call the June 14th meeting of the MVPE committee to order. Um, I'm Jay Arnold. I am the chair of the committee. And um, Krista or Annette, can we do a roll call, please, of committee members? Okay. So we have Jay Arnold. Here. Michelle Anderson. Present. Ben O'Mara. Here. Damon declined the meeting. Justin Borro. Here. Pete Ricky. Here. Katie Sheehan. We do have a quorum. Okay, thank you. Are there members of the audience who would like to introduce themselves? If so, please uh, raise your hand and I will recognize you. If there's any members of the audience that want to be recognized, please raise your hand. There we go. Go ahead, Todd. Sorry about that. I was trying to clap, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> my, name is, <laughs> my name is Todd Allred. I am the executive director for the Plumbing, Heating, Cooling Contractors of Washington, and I'm here to kind of see the process and how y'all do what you do. Excellent. Welcome. Anybody else would like to be recognized? Okay, seeing none, we'll get on to our business agenda. First item is to review and approve the agenda. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda as posted? So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Chell, seconded by Pete. All in favor? Seconded by Justin, I think. Sorry, seconded Aye. Justin. Great. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the agenda is approved. First item is uh, an opinion uh, request, um, actually four of them. So we'll go through those. Um, Chris, did you want to share screens and introduce each one? Here, hang on just a second. Let me put up. And as she is doing this as a background, as we're looking at these opinion requests, um, if this committee uh, chooses to, with a unanimous recommendation, we can um, uh, approve the opinion. Otherwise, it would go to the full SBCC for consideration at our next meeting. Used to having multiple screens. I apologize. <laughs> okay. So uh, these are all questions that have come in through WSU's um, technical assistant line and funneled through the city of West Richland. Um, so there, there are quite a few of them. The uh, first interpretation here is mostly just uh, questions that they have where they've caught mistakes and are just trying to clarify that they are indeed mistakes. Uh, first one in table R406.3, Appears there's a typo in the header of option three, high efficiency HVAC equipment options, and footnote C regarding the connected thermostat option. We believe it should be should state that option three eleven can only be used with options three point one and three point two. Right now it reads three point one and three point three, and they are correct. Um, should have been three point two. And then in item 3.6, the secondary HSPF2 calculation is incorrect. Value should be 8.5 rather than 9, and they are also correct there. And the next question is, how do the new combined heat and power units, CHP, fall under option 6, renewable electric energy option? 
And the answer is currently option six is limited only to solar and wind generation and doesn't address THP systems. So uh, that's a potential code change proposal in the future. Question four, is the variable capacity heat pump CHP referenced in option three, high efficiency HVAC equipment options, referencing the AHRI definition or the NEEP specifications? And the answer is the intent is that the equipment meets the specifications of and is listed under the NEEP cold climate air source heat pump product list and specifications. Okay. Thank you, Krista. Uh, first, let the record show that Katie, Sh Katie Sheehan has uh, joined us. And uh, secondly, are there any um, questions for Krista on this first interpretation? Okay, before we um, open it up for committee discussion, is there any public comment on this particular uh, proposed interpretation? Please raise your hand in Zoom if you want to make public comment on this item. Okay, seeing none, any committee discussion? Um, I'm trying to figure out how to raise my hand here. <laughs> Jump in, please. Okay. Yeah, they changed the controls on me here. <clears throat> um, yes, so I've I've looked at these and they are all they all uh, are correct. Um, as far as I can tell. Okay. Thank you, Chell. And uh, for at least in, in my Zoom, it's under the React, you have a, a raise hand uh, option. Uh, but any other, uh, any other discussion on this? Okay, I'd like to entertain a motion that we approve this interpretation. Chell, um, that we approve the interpretation and then it doesn't need to go to the full council. I'll second that. It's been moved by Chell, seconded by Pete. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Next opinion. And Krista, if you're talking, you are muted. He's working on it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually in the room mic rather than my mic, so it will always appear that I'm. Got it. Thank you. Okay, so the second interpretation is on insulation in ceilings with attic spaces. Does this section imply that, like a wall system, we're referencing the R value of the cavity insulation? Or to better explain, an R49 roof is really an R42 roof with the compressed edge insulation. If the answer is yes, what is the minimum edge insulation? Uh, the answer is no. The section reflects the two typical ceiling types. An advanced frame ceiling will allow for full depth uncompressed insulation to extend over the top plate line of the exterior wall. The standard framing will have the insulation that tapers and is compressed at the edges where it approaches the top plate. It would not be compressed throughout the attic space. There is no minimum requirement at the tapered edge, but it should fill the space below the baffle. There are a couple of illustrations of the standard framing, raised hill is the advanced framing. Okay, is there any questions from the committee on this proposed opinion?
Is there any comment, public comment, on this proposed commit, uh, opinion? If you have so, please raise your hand. It may be under react, raise hand. And if you're having trouble, please just jump in. Okay, here at seeing none, any committee discussion? Shell, please go ahead. Uh, thank you. I have looked at this and it, it appears to be the correct opinion. Um, so I'll make a motion to Please. prove this as written. Okay. Can I get a second? A second. It's been moved by Chell, seconded by Ben to approve uh, the second opinion and uh, not send it before the full council. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Next, siting installation. Okay, on the wall assemblies in remodels, if the wall is opened when replacing siding, the R5 continuous insulation in table R402.1.3 required? The proposed answer is no. Section R503.1.1 requires only that the existing wall cavities be filled with insulation, either to a minimum R15 for two by four walls or R21 for two by six walls. Okay. Any questions about this? Any public comment? Committee discussion. Seeing none, can I get a motion? I'll make a motion we approve this and then send it on or, uh, so it doesn't have to be sent on to the full committee or full council. All second. Moved by Pete, seconded by Justin to approve this uh, opinion as written. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. For the last one. Uh, this one, I got some input from Chell this morning on some changes that uh, one of the TAG members had suggested to the question and answer. This is on uh, supplemental heating for air source heat pumps. The question is, under what circumstances can supplemental heat, such as base pan warmers, be provided and meet requirements for system type four with table R406.3, option 3.3 or 3.6? Base pan warmers, supplemental heat. That's the additive question. Answer, uh, Proposed is electric resistant supplemental heat within a unit can be installed provided the unit performs per the federal definition for a cold climate heat pump and it is included in the NEP qualified product list. Note A allows additional supplemental heat for the dwelling unit. Base pan heaters are not considered supplemental heating as they are integral to the function of many cold climate heat pumps. Again, the red line text is additive this morning. Okay. Given uh, this is uh, slightly changed from um, what was released, Chelly, you want to talk a little bit about the outreach that you've done? Yes. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I reached out to Greg Nevenport, who is a tag member and um, former uh, employee at Mitsubishi. It was a lot about heat pumps. Um, <clears throat> And he responded that uh, base pan warmers are, are um, <laughs> integral to some 
or mini cold climate heat pumps. And they're uh, for defrost. They have they're not um, they're not supplemental heat, um, in his opinion. And I would take his opinion pretty seriously. Um, <clears throat> in the opinion, I had struck out the words such as base pan warmers in the question um, because they're not supplemental heat, and the question implies that they're supplemental heat. Um, so yeah, I think this is a correct interpretation if so nobody from richland is on is that correct is anybody from richland on i was wondering if this because they they what they sent was a bunch of questions that weren't as clear as the questions we have in front of us and so if they were on i would love to hear from them does this answer the, the underlying reason for asking the question or not Yes, and if there is somebody from the city of Richland or uh, online, please raise your hand or just jump in. And that city of West Richland, or, uh, there's, a, there's a big difference to us who live here. I <laughs> uh, appreciate that. Thanks, Pete. Uh, offline. I'm sorry, Krista, I didn't hear that. Or anybody from WSU's Healthline. Ah, of course. Okay, I'm I'm seeing none. Is there any questions from committee members on this? Yeah, I'd like a little bit of clarification on what the purpose of a base pan heater is. I'm not familiar with it with the term, so We'll read Mike Kennedy on the phone. Oh. Yes, you have a, a public comment, Mr. Kennedy. Oh, I was just going to say the base pan heaters or otherwise known as crankcase heaters are a little heater that keep the basically keep the refrigerant a little bit warm. So when the heat pump starts up, it doesn't get this super cold refrigerant going in, which is really hard on the mechanics of the heat pump. So pretty much every heat pump has one. Thank you for Thanks. that explanation. Thanks. Okay. So they're yeah they're 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 just they're part of the heat pump itself. They're not an add-on in any sort. The ones I'm familiar with are part of the heat pump. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they're actually a problem when you start talking about heat pumps in really warm climates. The crankcase heaters actually are turn out to be a pretty big energy use. Um, and so you start wondering, well, are heat pumps worth it? But that's in that's in California. Is that, is that primarily because they're then being used to evaporate condensate? No, that... no, it's just they run at like 50 or 75 watts anytime the temperature is below about 40 or 45. Oh, okay, all right. Um, and so. Katie, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, technical difficulties. Um, so the way this is written, we were answering the first question and answering the second question. Is that kind of how it's intended with the, sorry, answering the first question with the first answer question, def sentence, sorry. And then the second question with the second sentence and answer is that kind of the idea just because this one is a yes no question the one in red both and both of them are are kind of is that fair to say tell chris you want to jump in i think the questions are related or the questions as we re as krista received them um were kind of convoluted. And so we, Krista mainly, um, figured out how to word them as a as coherent questions. Got it, okay. <clears throat> and so I guess my, my understanding, and this is a question for um, others, but my understanding from Greg is that 
base band heaters are a part of the unit. And so they would be part of the efficiency of the unit. So if the unit is tested at a certain efficiency, that would include the base band heater as, as part of that testing. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, Rand, you have your hand up. Do you have a public comment or something to add to the discussion? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to make sure I understood um, the definition here because um, when I hear base pan heater, I'm thinking of a uh, heater that is installed to ensure that the condensate that comes off the coils during a defrost is, is not um, frozen in the pan of the unit and is is removed appropriately. Um, I I think that pretty much everything that's been said about um, crankcase heaters would still pretty much apply. Although I do know that in some cases the the base pan heater, as, as I'm defining it, um, is is an option that is added on as a, as a an a, an additional option is not necessarily, uh, you know, does not necessarily come from the manufacturer as a standard option. Thank you. Okay, is there any further discussion? If I um, might make a, Randy, you have something else? Yeah, I, I, um, I guess I did have a, a further question on that, which is uh, I heard that the rationalization of the interpretation was that this should be allowed and, and the, the rationalization is based on a crankcase heater application. Um, I guess I'm not clear whether or not the baseband heater as I've described it is was still considered part you know similar enough and part of the the same interpretation rationalization so I guess that's just I was looking for some clarification on that okay Chelly, are you responding to this or do you have a, a separate comment you're responding please go ahead um nothing in here says crankcase heater um it just says base pan warmer base pan heater um so the, the crankcase heater if if there is a difference between a crankcase heater and a base pan heater this only says base pan heater in it um and they are integral to uh, according to greg most cold climate heat pumps to make them function correctly and and he suggests that they're actually necessary whenever the design temperature is below 35F, which is, I think, all of Washington. Okay, Ben? Yeah, I guess, would it be possible to get in touch with someone at the city or the, the helpline to help clarify the origin of their, their comment and specifically what they're, they're looking to clarify? Um, just so we can we can address the opinion based on that. Well, one option that we could consider is um, uh, either a couple options. We could table this to a future meeting to get some information, or we could also refer this to the full council meeting um, next week, and then that may give us a chance to continue the broader get some more information and continue a uh, discussion in front of a broader audience. Shell, um, given your experience on this committee and previous interpretations, can, do you have any um, guidance on how we've handled this in the past? Yeah, I think if there's any question, you know, this is affecting every, potentially every building in the state, we should, you know, not make a decision today if there's a question about the accuracy um, and probably should, I'd say we should send it to the full council because that's next week and it could still be done in a timely fashion and we could get more information by then. Okay. Justin? 
Yeah, and that's kind of what I was going to say. Why don't we take it to the full council and why don't we reach out and invite um, the person that that actually brought this question to uh, talk to the full council so we understand it fully. Okay, I will take that as a motion. So moved, yeah. <laughs> okay. Second. Second. Okay, so the motion is to um, refer this opinion to the full council where we can get some... Um, more input, including from uh, the request to work. Uh, is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Um, thank you. Um, uh, Krista, there is something uh, on the agenda for uniform plumbing code opinion request. Uh, there was previously the proponent for that withdrew their question. Okay. Thank you. Next on the agenda is item four, adoption of the standard UL 60335-2-40-2022 in compliance with, with House Bill 1050 from 2021. Krista. So there was a bill in... 2021 that gave ecology uh, direction to write some standards for global warming potential on refrigerants, uh, but put in a caveat that uh, they could do this by January 2025 only if the council has adopted the UL standard so three three five two forty edition four prior to uh, January of twenty twenty three is not liking me today. Um, However, there were some delays in getting the standard published by UL, and it didn't come out until December of 2022, uh, December of 2022. But we were unable to adopt it prior to that January 1 date. And the question, there's... Uh, Further caveat that if don't adopt it by January 20, uh, 2023, then apologies rules be effective or can be effective no earlier than 20 month, 24 months after we adopt it. The question is, uh, do we want to adopt it via expedited or uh, cycle rulemaking now, or do we want to wait until we adopt the 2024 code, which includes the model code includes reference to this particular standard? My question uh, to the broader audience is, do you believe that this is just an editorial change? Uh, I'm unaware of the major differences between the third edition and the fourth edition of this standard, or if this is a substantive rule that we should go through the full rulemaking process. Michelle, go ahead. So Krista, have we adopted this UL standard just a prior edition? Correct. Yeah, we have the earlier edition adopted. And I think we adopted uh, the use of A2L refrigerants a few, several years ago. Um, so I guess if if this updated edition suggests it um, improves safety standards and leak detection and all that, it would seem in the public interest to <clears throat> include this new standard um, as soon as we can. But I would like to know the, the major differences if, if Krista, you have those available or, or Ben, perhaps. Ben? 
So I don't I don't have like a offhand um, comparison between the the differences in the UL standards, but I, I did want to just indicate like so as I mentioned, we're looking at the the house bill now. This is in the the WAC one seven three four four three um, requirements, and and yeah, it's like the the major thing is the trigger for the refrigerant GWP requirements that will be initiated 24 months after um, this version or edition of the UL standard gets put into place. So, I, and Chris, I don't know, have you been uh, in contact with anyone at Department of Ecology regarding what their interpretation is and the urgency that they might place on this? Um, being adopted? I have been in touch with them. They have been emailing me about once a quarter asking me if we've adopted it yet. Okay. Um, so they haven't expressed urgency beyond that, but they, they are anxious. So then we're planning on adopting it. And, and yeah, like I, earlier today, doing some research, there's some um, upcoming federal requirements that somewhat overlap with this, but don't exactly have the same requirements. But it there's probably some further discussion with the Department of Ecology that would be helpful to um, get everyone aligned on and what what makes sense for the state requirements to require, but I think ultimately, like if we can um, adopt this newer UL edition in off-cycle rulemaking, it would probably be beneficial to uh, provide clarity to um, the industry side and manufacturers, distributors, and um, installers of this equipment. So. They, they know what to expect on, on a state level at least. But I think we, we can, I can help do some more research into the, the differences in the UL additions. Okay, Shell. To be clear, my understanding is this committee cannot enter expedited rulemaking, right? This is a preamble to the council, perhaps as soon as next week entering expedited rulemaking, is that correct? Yes, the action that this committee would take would be making a recommendation to the SBCC. And the question that Krista had asked is, is this something that we want to do expedited rulemaking on or uh, incorporate into the next uh, full cycle of updates? And it sounds like Ben is advocating for expedited rulemaking. And it also sounds like we've got further work to decide on to the extent of that process depending on the changes between the currently adopted edition and edition four. Right. There's also the option of the um, off-cycle rulemaking, which would put it through the full public hearings, whereas expedited uh, just puts it out there. And if somebody comments on it, then we would go through the full public hearings. Okay. Don't believe we've got the information we need to make a choice between expedited and off-cycle rulemaking, but it sounds like maybe the action we could recommend is, is uh, um, not waiting for um, the 2024 cycle. Okay. Is there any uh, public comment on this particular issue? Seeing none, is there, is there a motion? Jill, please go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll make a motion that we recommend um, to the council that um, this enter either expedited or off cycle rulemaking um, at the council meeting next week and that um, Krista and whoever else uh, does research on on what is allowed based on the the significance of the the modification 
as to whether we could attempt expedited rulemaking or whether we need to go to off-cycle rulemaking. Um, and yeah, I'll, that, that's the motion. And then I'll just hope that Ben and others with an understanding of this, uh, the effects of this uh, would be able to provide us a bit more information at the council meeting on um, how much of an impact it is, positive or negative. I'll yeah. second that. <laughs> And yes, also I'll and I'll um, try to um, bring together some uh, resources prior to the council meeting next week. Very good. So it's been moved by Chell and seconded by Ben to recommend to the full SBCC that we enter either expedited or off-cycle rulemaking to adopt this new standard. And um, uh, Ben will come back to the. Uh, that's the motion. Um, is there any discussion? And I would just add, I appreciate, Ben, your, your work to do some research and, and come back with some more information at our council meeting next week. Okay, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the motion is approved. Um, next on our agenda is other business. Uh, ben, you had something you wanted to bring forward. Actually, we had an, a petition. For oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Uh, item five, commercial energy code rulemaking for C403.1.4. Right. This is the petition that the council voted on in April. Uh, they voted to go into rulemaking, but didn't specify anything beyond that. And we did file the CR101. And we can file the CR 102 as of, I think, July 5th is the first possible date for filing. But staff's question to the council is, what language would you like us to use when filing? Uh, the proposal as submitted in the petition, which is the language seen here, uh, striking out electric resistance in Items five and seven, or exceptions five and seven to C403.1.4, or uh, the originally proposed language for the 2021 energy code, which is very similar to this, but not quite, or some option, or um, of changing or not changing or whatever version of language you would like to proceed with. Yeah. Thank you, Krista. Ben? Uh, I guess, Krista, when I was looking at the petition, I had a question um, regarding the, the uh, what the petition was saying regarding um, the language in the original CR 102 that they were referencing, it, it seemed like that um, for what I was finding in the, the January 2022 um, CR 102, it looked like um, that, that electric resistance was included in both of those exceptions. And so I'm, I'm curious what the basis of the petition is um, is there, they're objecting to that potentially being added um, in further rulemaking, but I don't, I don't see there being a change there. So I just wanted to confirm that the basis of the petition. Uh, their argument was that the intent of the rule was to strike electric resistance and allow all supplemental heating sources. And by not adopting that, it was a substantive change from the proposed rule. Okay, I, I understand. So they're, okay. So they were looking at the, the, um, I see, okay. And um, 
as a point of clarification, the question before us today is not the petition itself. The SBCC has already voted to enter rulemaking on this petition. Um, the question that Chris is putting forward is, um, as we enter rulemaking, do we want to have just the proponents uh, proposed changes, or do we want to also include the original language as an option or other options to say, let's, uh, what is being uh, considered during the rulemaking process? Is there any, um, any questions or discussions on that? And I'll also open it up for public comment. Uh, and while I'm waiting for public comment to raise, Chell, you had a you had a uh, comment. Yeah, I was waiting to see if there was public comment on this before I spoke. But if there's none, I'll speak. I I, I guess we can recommend something today. We we're not making final decisions on what language, but I would recommend we include the language that was in the CR 103 as the CR 102 language. In other words, um, with the words electric resistance in both exception five and seven. That's my recommendation. Is there any other, is there further discussion on that? Okay, with that, I'll take that as a motion to say, let's uh, include uh, an option with the uh, original language. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, it's been seconded by Ben. Um, I'm, I'll make a comment that if we're recommending this to the full committee, I think this gives us the um, broadest um, opportunity to look at options um, when as we go into rulemaking and and get uh, public input and decide uh, what what that final language is. Is there any other discussion? Okay, so the motion is to um, include options with the um, uh, original language in addition to the proponent's language as let me back up. The motion is to recommend to the SPCC that we include the original language as an option in addition to the proponent's language as we enter rulemaking on this. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Now. <laughs> We are to uh, other business, and uh, Ben, you had something that you wanted to uh, bring forward. Yes, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, so I, I sent this to a couple folks um, this week, found that um, we were looking at some uh, efficiencies for new VRF equipment and found that the, the listed efficiencies based on the AHRI testing information was lower than the um, than the, the code required values that are, are currently in um, both the uh, 2018 Washington State Energy Code as well as the um, 2021 Energy Code. And this is due to a change in the testing procedure for AHRI uh, 1230 between the 2014 test procedure in the 2021. So for VRF equipment um, that's using A1 refrigerants, it's re now re it'll report a, a lower uh, efficiency value with the new test procedure, which then falls below the stated minimum requirements that are in the efficiency tables in chapter four of the energy codes. And so I guess this is just to bring it to the committee's attention um, and um, just look out towards the uh, near future to potentially find some um, solutions to provide guidance or direction on how um, 
equipment that's that's being delivered and listed with the based on the newer testing procedures can be applied to existing energy codes. Uh, I believe this will be resolved in the 2024 code cycle, but as it stands for um, current and existing projects, um, they'll be subject to um, either being very limited on the um, types and sizes of equipment they can use or having to work with jurisdictions to show that um, like with the letter that um, we're seeing here from Mitsubishi, uh, an explanation on why some of the equipment will be shown with a, a lower efficiency value than um, is required by the codes. Okay. Ben, thank you for bringing this to our attention. Chow? Yeah, I guess is there a question you're asking or a, an action that, that anybody could take to address that? I, I guess, yeah, I didn't have anything um, ready to present as a, a path forward on this way yet, but I, I think it would be good to see if there's others that are interested in developing that and working towards um, something, if there's something that we can do. After uh, the, the current codes. Okay, ben, I think this would be useful also to bring up in other business at our meeting next week, just to know that this is uh, something that you're looking for input on, and it may be something that comes before the SBCC that we need to make changes to the 2021 energy code. Agreed. And yeah, hopefully by, by next week, we'll, we'll have a, a better idea of a uh, potential strategy to address it and uh, get some more feedback from other, other vendors um, that are likely in the same category as Mitsubishi train. Okay. Um, other business is allowed for public comment to, to, uh, depending on the nature of the business. Is there any public comment on this item? Anything further that folks can help shed light on this particular issue? Seeing none. Katie, you had your hand up. Was there a question on this or do you have other, other business? No, I mean, I was just going to ask, and so maybe this is the conversation that'll happen at the larger meeting, but just whether or not this could be an interpretation or if it has to be a rule and, and go into rulemaking. Um, but I suppose that's something that we're going to be talking about. So, Okay, very good. Okay, is there any other business? Um, Dustin and Krista, do you have what you need um, from from this committee? I believe so. Okay. I will concur. Very good. Well, I thank you for your time uh, this morning. We've reached the end of our agenda, so we are adjourned. SBCC members, we'll see you next week, and hope uh, members of the public also are uh, able to to tune in next Friday. Thanks for running an efficient and efficient meeting, Mr. Chair. Nice work. Okay. Yeah. Have a